Let's come to an understanding. 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 I said, let's come to an understanding. 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 Let's come to understanding. We're live. What's up, everybody? This is Amish Patel. Let's come to an understanding podcast. This is Drew Picklick, uh, co-host, and today, b- b- groundbreaking, we got a guest. Yes, you got a guest. Intr- do you want to introduce yourself? I'll introduce myself. Janelle Dennis here. Janelle Dennis, everybody. Yeah. If, the, if there was an audience. Living in New York now. Living in living in New York City. Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. Mm-hmm. The, the most populous borough. That's what they say. I believe you on okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> Drew has a lot of New York facts, and he has a New York Times subscription. I bring it up a lot. Oh, do you? Oh yeah, he pays for it. Why is that? Oh. Why is that? Why is that seen as a, a like a huge thing? I gotta be honest, because I'm it, like, the it's person. Crazy. I get the New York Times daily digest emails, and then I click them, and then I read the article, and then it's like, oh, you have to pay. That's better than me. I just listened to the audio. <laughs> so I was I'm the guy who was like, Okay, I'll pay. I was yeah. <laughs> it was like I, I I want this enough, I'll I'll pay. I'll yeah. pay eight dollars a month. I just get frustrated. I'm like, what happens next? I'm gonna have to go to C B C now. Hopefully they have this international. You, got news. Good, you, you can't beat the times for uh coverage, honestly. I don't know, but the, but then yeah. again, people people have their issues with them. Corporate media. Mm-hmm. Corporate media, we well this is media. We're doing this is media. Free media. This is media, not corporate. I wish, yeah. I wish there was some sort of money coming into this, but it's truly it not not corporate media. I don't even say it's like volunteer, but it's like I don't know what it is. What is, what is it? What kind of media? Uh, independent media. Yeah, <laughs> for the good of the people. Independent media for the people, for the community, and for the culture. Inde- independent, yeah. unverified, uh, un- <laughs> unfact checked <laughs> um, media. Well, We're hazy on the facts. <laughs> We're hazy on the well, facts. Well, the New York often. Times backing you guys unofficially. Well, unofficially sponsored by the New York Times, the Guardian, <laughs> the Intercept, <laughs> the Atlantic. A lot of publications are unofficially um, yeah. <laughs> underwriting our endeavors. Uh, but yeah, you, you what brought you to town. Why why are you in Toronto this weekend? Multiple things. Uh, family day. It's a holiday. President's Day. Was doing some shows. There was a dark comedy festival. Was opening for Mark Normand. Okay. Three nice, shows nice. on the Sunday. And you know him from New York, right? You guys yeah, you yeah. He's okay. my buddy from New York. And um, also, honestly, doctor appointment, too. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you were yeah. saying you got because you, you're in the States. Yeah. High deductible plans. Do you have a, do you have a plan down there? Mm-hmm. What is it crazy though? It's a great benefit plan by American standards, right. like a great plan, <laughs> uh, but like a fifteen hundred dollar deductible. I just can't even wrap my mind really? around having to spend fifteen fifteen hundred dollars out of pocket before getting before any. It kicks in. Yeah. What's the point then? These Ameri- yeah. American health care. This is why I can't go. This is why New York, I'm terrified. Mm-hmm. I'm terrified. Yeah. I, can't, I don't know if I can go. Yeah, but I told my mom, I'm like, it's cheaper for me to get a flight here right. and see my doctor for free. I'm like, I just want a blood test. That's all I want. Yeah. 1500 bucks for a blood test? Oh. Wait, are you mm-hmm. allowed You allowed to keep your stuff here, though, because you're still Ontario resident? Yeah, and I think there's a, you know, you have to, you can't be, you have to visit every couple of, like, a couple of times in the six-month period or something, and I'm always back. Right, you have to come back often yeah. enough. So you're, but, And you're not a New York State resident. No, right. I'm on a okay. temporary visa. You're on a temporary so. visa. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that works. That works. Yeah. That works. Not to get all in your business, not to turn over rocks. Yeah. Get up in your business. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are Jamaican, and we hate people getting in our business. So. I don't, oh, I don't yeah, 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 yeah. That is, that is a thing. Is that an Indian thing, too? No, we love, we're, we're very nosy. <laughs> we love to get in each other's business. We like to know what's happening in the whole community. What is happening in community? Like, they're very, like, uh, they're very nosy. And if you don't share, people are like, what are you trying to hide? What are you doing? Oh, whoa. Really? Yeah. My mom doesn't even like when I say her name in public. Oh, my God. I've mentioned my grandma a couple times on this podcast. Yeah. My mother's taking me aside and being like, what are you, why are you talking about her dining room table? I was like, what? Whoa. what do you mean? She's like, she's buying that dining room table with her own money. You don't need to be talking about yeah. that. The world, she's like, she would be horrified if she knew that people knew that you were out here talking about her new dining room table. She'll never find yeah. out. We might even have to scrub this part from the episode, yeah. honestly. Because but it's I've, only when it comes I've to our off. personal business. Like, Jamaicans will talk about everybody else's oh, business. Oh, for sure, for okay. sure. Happily. For sure, but do mm-hmm. not, do not say my name. Keep my name out of your mouth. 
is that actually that's a national <laughs> motto, I believe. <laughs> 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 Dash me name upon your mouth. I think that is on the f- that's under uh, in Latin. Uh, under I the think. crest. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Latin, I believe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God damn. So wait, New York, Ameri- United States, you got an election coming up, 2020. What's the temperature? We're doing a little, can we take the temperature? Let's put that thermometer in. Well, that's kind of awkward because I still can't convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, it's hot. It's uh, people are scared, yeah. but also New York is a very l- liberal, liberal, yeah. democratic For leaning. Sure. But but now you have the whole liberals, progressives, right? Like Mm -hmm. the the Democrats are being split. Younger people tend to be going more towards the progressive route where the Gen Xers, the baby boomers, they're looking at the liberal. Mm -hmm. Like, do you you, you feel any of that tension within 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 these circles? Like, do you see older liberal people and then like younger, more progressive people kind of butting heads in New York? Yeah, I think it's more it comes down to the actual reps. So like Bernie, the, the hardcore bor- Bernie bros. And I wouldn't even say bros because I, I, like, I like... That's a slanderous like, term. That, that, is a, that is a slanderous term. They're saying that they're debunk, They're trying to debunk Bernie bros yeah. as a concept. Cause he, I'm because I'm not a bro. Most, I like Bernie. Yeah, you, yeah it's, it's not bros. It's, it's, it's derogatory apparently. People are trying to make it sound like, oh, it's a bunch of bros that like... It's, it's yeah. pejorative. Look, it's a pejorative. It's, it's an insult. Nobody likes yeah. bros right now. But listen, we've, we've been accused, yeah, we've been accused of being Bernie bros. We've been accused of being Bernie bros. I know. The accusations oh, are flagrant. Oh, this is personal. Listen, you cut deep, Janelle. I mean, we invite you on a podcast. And you start throwing I up triggered these you guys immediately. <laughs> but but speaking uh, about Bernie though, we it's we're getting a lot of news here that like and Andrew Yang dropped out. Andrew Yang dropped out. That's so sad. Yeah, I did like him. Did you like Chappelle's Yang Gang? Hmm. Chappelle was Yang Gang. Did you know that? Officially? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. On the books, but I think it was a way for him to be like, I'm not super Bernie up top. And then when Yang eventually, I think Yang's gonna endorse Bernie. When Yang oh. inevitably does that, I think Chappelle's gonna be like, well, I, I have to follow my, I have to follow my. They're guy. all gonna endorse Bernie. Let's be honest. I have yeah. to, not all, not all. Like Anyone who? who like who? Like who? Um, Yang will. Okay. And then uh, our girl Tulsi. Tulsi, Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> They're gonna both go Bernie for sure. Uh-huh. I think Steyer. I think he could pick up Yang, Steyer, Tulsi, and Elizabeth Warren. If she if she has to come to God, mm. she's been fucking up a little bit. She's yeah. been getting wild. But she here's the question that I was trying to ask mm. though: is that like it seems from it seems from here that the liberal media is making it sound like Bernie's not really winning. They're trying to like block like even in Iowa they didn't count the votes. Yeah. Right away oh my God. Parties. So on the ground there are people into Bernie. Or is it like how how does it look? I would say yeah, I would say that most of the people that I interact with they're pro Bernie, but then it's like the internet skews it too because I'm also friends with a lot of really progressive. You're in chat rooms, uh, Brooklyn (laughs) comments. You're on AOL, and they're all like Warren for life. Yeah, especially the Warren grad AOL. (laughs) Really, there's a lot of Warren people Mm -hmm. that you're finding still. Yeah, Warren, I won't back down. Full Warren all the way. Yeah. Like, like, okay, give me, like, what, what's the demo? What's the demographic there? Like, who's, who are these people? Mm. We're Warren over Bernie mm-hmm. still. Yeah. Is it, is it leaning female? I'd say leaning female, yeah. Okay, okay. Because how did you feel about the whole, like, uh, when, when she dropped the heat on Bernie, uh, saying that two years oh. ago he said that a woman could never win? Could like, win. How did you feel about that? And then he com- and completely denied. He's like, I didn't say that. Yeah, yeah right? he was like, he's like, dash me name upon your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that was like, I don't know. I feel like that was an irrelevant thing to bring up. I think that was a miscalculation on her part. It was a miscalculation on her part. And she miscalced. Yeah. Oh, she miscalced on that. I, 100%. Because I think that it, no, everyone took that as like, uh, first of all, he's not, that's not, you know what it was? That was Bernie's brown face moment in a way. You know, in the, in the, in the way that it's this, it's the way that Uh. this, it's like, because Trudeau had the brown face, but everyone was like, you know what? We don't think you hate. Brown people, yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was her thing of being like, "I'm gonna get, I got a gotcha on something you did, yeah." And they're like, people are like, even if he did say that, we know he doesn't hate women, and that that's not what he means. That he like, yeah. And what was the like actual? What was the actual quote? That he said a a woman that she claimed that he said a woman could uh, not win the presidency. But was that his opinion? She's saying that he said that, but was it saying was he saying that the electorate won't vote a woman in, or was he saying that? Yeah, because if he just thinks people yeah. won't do like 
that doesn't mean he doesn't think that a woman is worthy. But he also right? campaigned on behalf of Hillary Clinton. He also tried to get her to go into yeah, the race Warren initially. He, he was trying to talk Warren into running like years yeah. ago. He, he oh. never believed that. He's always been supportive. So of sw- like she switched it up on he him. He wanted man. her, instead of him getting wow. in the race in 2016, he wanted her to get in the race. Hmm. He was trying to petition her. But she was trying to be cal- – she's – because this is – I think the thing now is people say that she's like, uh, you know, a bit of an operator, right? So she's like pl- – she's, Smooth. She's playing politics but in a way where she's not trying to upset like the, the basket at all. Where Bernie's a little bit more willing to, you know, stand toss for his values. Toss the basket at your head. Yeah, toss it at your fucking head. He doesn't yeah. give a shit. Yeah. yeah. And, and in a way. Th- this attack that she did on – this I, – not to call it an attack but kind of – it does feel like her being like, we're playing hardball, Bernie. Bring it. You can have a yeah. heart attack. Like it was just like we're just playing. We're just going hard on you. Yeah. We're just. Gonna That's actually one thing I've been hearing a lot that everyone's like, ah, oh, but do we really want an old president? He's gonna be dead so soon. He he's gonna he's yeah. senile, borderline senile. I don't think he's. I've senile. been hearing that a I lot. I think Joe Biden's more senile than, <laughs> than Bernie <laughs> by far. But on top of it, like Donald Biden. Trump is two years younger. Like. What are we in grade eleven and we're like you're gonna get ninered like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like what is it oh it's two years is a big di- like at seventy five yeah. and seventy seven I don't yeah. think we're we're splitting, splitting hairs. hairs the fl- the few real hairs that we have left here too you know what yeah. I mean we're we're splitting like I don't know okay so it's it's seeming like Bernie because cool. yeah. I was just in California and like. Most every younger person that I... T- I did talk to actually a friend of mine who used to live here. She's going for Warren. or uh, But she'd say she'll take whoever, really. She just wants Trump out. And she's like 25. What happened to what happened to AOC? She's a congresswoman. She's, congresswoman. she's not even old enough to run for president. Oh, she she's to, not in the You need to be 35. Either. Fully supporting hmm. Bernie, though. She's fully Is on she? Team Bernie. Oh, she's stomping. Oh, she's out there stomping. She's stomping. Wow. She's stomping. <laughs> she's stomping. Cornel, Cornel West was out there stomping for him, too. Yep. Damn. He's, he's, he's got, the real deal. He's the real deal. He's got a lot of support. I think Danny DeVito's even in the camp. DeVito? Ooh. I didn't hear about DeVito. You know, people always... People That's always Tony say, Danza, maybe? Uh, no, I think Tony... I think, yeah, Tony Danza. Who is it? Scott Bayo is the Republican guy. Hmm. Tony Danza... I think he's a Democrat. He was on Broad City, so I think he's a Democrat. That's yeah. what, I'm, I'm literally just basing him off <laughs> of playing Abby Jacobson's dad in the episode oh, of Broad right, City. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That, if you do that, I'm going to just go out and think maybe you're a Democrat. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah. yeah. But one thing I have been hearing, though, is from the people I speak with, a lot of them just assume that Trump's going to win again. Yeah. They're like, like, oh, we're going to be fucked again. With, with, with Trump, What's like, every step of the way, people are like, well, he'll, he's not going to win this level of it. And then he's not going to win this. Like, even the Republican side, people are like, oh, no, he's not going to get past Ted Cruz. He's not going to p- get past whatever. He just beats everyone. Yeah. He's hard to beat. Even with this impeachment. Trout. Like, well, it was so cl- it close like there for a second. But I don't know yeah. if it looked like, I mean, it, in some ways it looked like he won, but in other ways it, like, dug up a lot of stuff. I think the reason why they did the impeachment was to kind of be like, bring to light, we know you're doing this stuff, now we have it on the record. That's why they even wanted the, the witnesses at the Senate uh, trial, and the Senate was like, no, we're not going to bring them, because it would just <laughs> do more bad PR that they don't need, right? So yeah. they just wanted to wrap it up. But I don't know, like, when people say, like, you know, Trump could still win. Yeah, of, of course he could still win. Like, there's two fucking options. Of course he could still win. It's one or the other. Yeah. But it's too early to say what kind of campaigns are going to be actually run in the general, I think. Because we're not going to get an idea of who the Democratic nomination is for a couple months now still. You think so? Well, then there's Bloomberg. What do people talk about uh, Bloomberg? Because Bloomberg, that's yeah. New York. That's got New York all over. Even though he's from Massachusetts. That's got oh, New York written he? all over. I don't know that. He's not even from New York. He's doing like daytime Ash talk shows. about it. Yeah, he's doing like daytime talk shows and stuff. They, yeah, all, he's all on The do, View. Yeah, all. His meme game very tight. Yeah. He's on the meme. His meme game is very tight. He, I think the meme game might be 50, 60 well, million it's alone. Well, did you have you heard about what he did with like you know fuck Jerry the Instagram account? Yeah. So what? he paid them like a bunch of money to then reach out to a whole bunch of other Instagram influencers, and then they did this like weird kind of like half ironic thing. Like uh, what's that? Like Grape Juice Boys? Do you know that account? No. Okay. Well, these are these are Instagram accounts I might follow or I might not follow. Mm. Uh, the Grape <laughs> Juice Boys though, they they like reposted a DM. It's like it's like a weird way of like getting his name out there of being like, yeah. uh, hi, would you like to be an official sponsor from the Bloomberg campaign? And then them being like kind of snarkily, ironically, like look at the DM we got. But then it's also like, but you are giving him a shout out by doing this. Oh. But you're actually, but you know it's lame to do that. So you're kind of distancing yourself from it mm-hmm. and being like, I'm not too sure if we're actually doing it. Like, it's like this weird kind of like 
be like cool and ironic yeah but like not even still get yeah paid like not like, even good press or bad out. press it's neutral press it's neutral and just putting his name out there just putting it like just like get, oh get him in your in your brain well it, it, it reminds like me of people who get these like uh social media contracts like mcdonald's will just pay like a famous youtuber to be like okay can you just like say that you eat it so that you love it just so that, that you're you loving it, it. Can, you, can, can we just get, just order mcdonald's like tonight and they'll the, some like jake paul does it and it's really yeah. good for his followers yeah, yeah yeah people pay like people get paid to do that they're like endorsement deals or sponsorship deals but it's all about like the engagement though they pay for engage they want like show clicks. me people click, show clicks. me the clicks show me people like interacting with the brand and like mm. you know remaking their own memes about it so he's mm. he's uh very very tight is bloomberg Full disclosure, that McDonald's comment was actually, we were sponsored by McDonald's for this episode. Uh, I do want to just put that on the record. Uh, we, we do have, because in Ontario, you have to you have to say. Uh, so yeah, that was a sponsorship thing. But, hashtag ad. Hashtag ad. Hashtag ad, but, where the know, nuggets at? It is. <laughs> where are the nuggets at? <laughs> that's, just, that's such a good tagline. They could use where that. Where the nuggets at? Yeah. Could you imagine? Janelle, if, you could copyright patent pending. Yeah. Oh my God, what a great commercial! Janelle, great Janelle <laughs> walks into the Let's Come to an Understanding Studios and goes, "Where's Where's the nuggets at? Yeah, where are the and nuggets you, at? And then do this in an M. You yeah, an M. especially if they do a Beyond Meat nugget. Like, where are the nuggets at? This isn't chicken. Mm. Oh, that's oh, really where good. the nuggets at. You can't just give that away. Oh man, we can't. This is gonna have to be on Patreon or something. This we're, so people pending. don't. This oh, might go. Pending. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll timestamp this. Yeah. We'll timestamp yeah. it. It'll be up tomorrow. Yeah. Oh my God. But yeah, Bloomberg. Yeah, Bloomberg is getting these influencers and like flat tummy tea yeah, yeah. people endorsing him. Flat tummy Because he's buying, he's, well, they're saying like uh, he's offering people twice as much as they get paid to work on another campaign because he has so much, he has so much goddamn money. So rich. What's the flat tummy tea? Oh, it's just a popular thing that's <laughs> uh, on Instagram that oh people. You don't know about this? So he's paying yeah. a bunch of girls. Yeah, is he just paying a bunch of girls to like wear a crop top and under it put like <laughs> <Mark> Bloomberg? <laughs> like, is that what he's doing? That's how he's going to win the presidency? That's how hey you guys. beat Trump. That's how you beat Trump. David. Hey guys, I lost so much weight last month. All I did was lift weights and stress out a lot about this election. Well, that was like the Kardashians. <laughs> the Kardashians have endorsed the flat tummy tea. They're like making a lot of money off of that. <laughs> okay. And I guess this is his way of infiltrating the Trump demo because the Kardashians are with Trump, right? She does a lot of work with him. Kim. But they're not supporting Trump, are Kanye, they? Kanye, Kanye bangs with Kanye bangs with him. Kanye pulled back. Let's come on. Hey. Did he? Let's be real with the co- with the culture He's right like now. dancing on the back, line, I feel. Kanye said, "Hey, I made a mistake. He apologized for it." But I don't know. Now he's all evangelical. Again, yeah. so I feel like now we don't know where he stands. He's trying to just—he's trying to get everybody to go back to God. Yeah. And who's the best Messiah it, we got right now? More than Donaldo. <laughs> huh? Who's a better Messiah? Mm. Maybe Bernie. Maybe. Yeah. But he's got no flat tummy tea. Bernie's actually in pretty—he's not, you know—he's in good shape. I would say that. Yeah. I wonder if he looks like with his shirt off. I wonder that too. You think he's... about that often? I think about that often. You think about uh, <laughs> he's got a senior's body. Guys. You know, he's, one of the one of the first things like word association that comes to mind when I hear Bernie is um, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Why? Because it's Jews in Vermont making no. ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's where. He <laughs> oh yeah, oh well, yeah, that too. Because um, he's from there, and they they endorse him super hard. Like they yeah, had yeah. a Bernie flavor. He's always there. Oh, he's sure. in front of the podium. Okay. Not and Ben and Jerry's is the best. Not yeah. wearing the flat tummy <laughs> tee, eh? Too much Ben and Jerry's. It's the opposite of flat tummy, actually. By the way, we're also sponsored, full disclosure, we're also sponsored by uh, Ben and Jerry's yes. uh, for, this, for this episode. Man, that'd be sick if we actually were getting some Ben and Jerry's and McDonald's money. I mean, listen, yeah. listen, we are in the. We look like a McDonald's the, ad people. We're not, we do look yeah, like, yeah, we do look like a McDonald's ad. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Man, that's what Canada is. Canada is just one big McDonald's ad. At this yeah. <laughs> That's what multiculturalism looks like. That's our entire yeah. acting industry. <laughs> everyone's just surviving on McDonald's commercials. <laughs> TD Bank, just McDonald's. A, McDonald's and, and Tim Hortons commercials. <laughs> yeah, everyone. Man, last year I was like, there's no integrity because both of them had like an Oreo drink. And I was like, where's the integrity? McDonald's and Tim Hortons. For, for, for which company? For both McDonald's and Tim Hortons both had Oreo-based drinks. There was an Oreo ice cap and then McDonald's had an Oreo ice flurry or whatever they call it. So you're saying Oreos kind of spreading spread it around? <laughs> <laughs> Oreos, Oreos is a lot up. of work for Canadian actors. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the big takeaway. That's it. Yeah, but the Canadian film industry really thriving off of that. 
Yeah, Oreo is kind of you know Oreo does need to have a little bit more uh, integrity. I think you're right. I think you're right. What is that? Nabisco? Who owns them? Er, uh, Christi, Mr. Christie. I think is it? I think on top of Mr. Christie, I don't know. I think it's Nabisco, or, or Christie. I think Nabisco owns Christie. Oh, I could be wrong. there's layers to it. There's layers, <laughs> there's layers to, to it. the shit. There's layers to it. Yeah, and there are layers. Mm-hmm. There's underground layers that are, are owned by the guy who owns Nabisco too, as well. I'm sure. Yeah. There's there's, a, there's, a whole <laughs> there's many layers. There's a black. <laughs> there's a <laughs> there's a black one, then a white one, then another black one. And Bloomberg hired their meme guy, I think. You oh, know, Bloomberg's sure. working with that marketing <laughs> team, and he's uh, he's getting his word out there. So okay, so but yeah. on the ground, Bloomberg, I I do like to see a guy like Bloom, Bloomberg spend tons of money and still nobody likes him. That would be a yeah. lot of fun for me, right? Well, now okay, so now this this past weekend, well, last week there was uh, the tape of him that came out saying how he's defending stop and frisk and how like even in 2015 after it was over, he was still being like, you know, we had to go in and like harass all these people and that thing like ruined people's lives like stop and frisk was like yeah you know give harassing people with the police giving them like records that they didn't need to have like jamming them up stopping them from going like forward in their life that was a horrible horrible policy horrible policy and he was still defending it in 2015 and then now there's a and bunch people of, were like, saying that he was right and he tried to deny it and is this why that uh, tape resurfaced well, no, he just apo- – so he only apologized for it formally in November before he started to campaign, before mm. he announced he was running, <laughs> right? So everyone was like – it was like, are you – like, really, what? bitch? You're sorry? Really, bitch? <laughs> really? <laughs> There's like an ex that gets out of a relationship where they were the shitty one. They're like, I'm so sorry. Anyways, who else wants it? <laughs> I just love it. Like he comes up with an apology, and the, just the political analysts are like, "He's running for president." <laughs> <laughs> this guy's running for president. I think we got it. <laughs> I smell an announcement. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, and then the other thing is, he has a bunch of uh, his like company has a bunch of sexual harassment lawsuits against them, like like sixty something. Not just Whoa. him, not just him personally, but his like Bloomberg LP or whatever, right? Oh my God. And none of it is going to see the day of light. Because there's all these NDs, like all these non-disclosure agreements. Mm. No one's talking about anything. And then, like, some a woman does claim that she got pregnant, and his response was "kill it." Apparently, that's <laughs> that was because he is pro-abortion. Uh, <laughs> 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 he's is, he is pro. He's pro-abortion rights. You know what I mean? He's pro-choice. So there is that. Yeah. Um, although saying "kill it" not kill really it. more of a demand. You know, less less choice. But yeah. maybe he's. He is funny though. Bloomberg's known for a sense of humor, so maybe that was uh, him being a little uh, tongue in cheek. Yeah, I'm trying Possibly. to. I'm trying to think if I were that girl, and I'm like, I don't necessarily want a baby right now. But if some dude's like, kill it, I'm like, whoa, I kind of want it. Much. Yeah, I kind of want to keep maybe it. Maybe he was saying it as a joke. Maybe he's palling around the office. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But then sounds like the kind of psycho who could take on Trump in 2020, right, guys? Ah. Uh, right? I don't think he has a. Ch- I think his policies are too. He's not too much in either one direction that he's going to alienate enough people on all sides to not take it. I that's, that's how I feel with him, hmm. with Bloomberg. Oh, but then here's the, the final thing. Donald Trump, uh, one of the big things against him is he doesn't release his tax returns. There's no information on his taxes. Guess who else is not releasing his tax information until after Super Tuesday at, at, at earliest? Bloomberg? Bloomberg. Yeah. He's like, Whoa. he's like, you need to see what I do with my 40 bill. You don't need to see what I do with my 50 bill. That's between me. Th- but, but me and my money is about me and my money. <laughs> <laughs> that does not involve you. Oh my so, god! So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of issues I think with him up top. A lot of issues with him up top. Yeah, just, uh, can I just say that Drew is looking for an acting agent in Toronto? Great characters. That was a great character. <laughs> great character. That me and my money. I like that. It's kind of like your the the uncut, uncut Tim's. Tim's yeah. Like uncut Tim's. Did great. You see that? Yeah, I shared it in my uncut in my uncut gems text group. That's oh, not really? a joke. I have a we we wow. bought out the whole ro- not the whole theater, but our whole row in the theater. Wow. And now we have this whole group and we just send each other anything on Cut Gems related. Have and you met I the send Safties? Them. Have you met the Safties in New York? I haven't, but my friend comedian Andy Fiore, he hosts a show on Sirius XM. Okay. I think he interviewed the Safties. And it was like yeah. two days after he interviewed them we did a show together and i was talking about how much i'm obsessed with uncut gems yeah i, like, I interviewed the safties i'm like how are they like, they were amazing like they're so cool they seem like cool guys yeah. they seem like they they're like they know what's up yeah did you watch good time i, I saw good time amish hasn't seen either yet he's out of spite to me i think because he thinks yeah. i'm too into the movie 
he's kind of well then explain explain you have netflix what's your excuse you're in <laughs> canada you can watch it uh i'm trying to i'm trying to watch some other stuff right now there's a lot on my queue it's on the queue it'll it'll mm-hmm. come up soon it'll come up watch? soon it'll come up don't get aggressive like I'm the character <laughs> again great oh, acting like it's character? good like the character like the yeah. character did you even see the movie you don't know if he's aggressive or not i saw the trailer four times because yeah, you're kind of times. on point there no he's can't right. you're right. yeah he's, he's a little aggressive <laughs> you're acting like uh the wife howard. adina I Men- howard. adina menzel no. did you see her at the oscars singing the frozen thing no that to me was uncut gems getting their nom <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was, that I thought the was weekend like, comes out and does when, some shit when she was like, singing that song from frozen with all those other people who sang it around the world there was like some lady from i don't know latvia singing it too yeah. i was like this is what it's all about yeah. uncut gems that's gems yeah yeah uncut gems is amazing and i'm not even a huge basketball fan like that but even like mm-hmm. i felt watching that the having known so many people in my life that are hardcore basketball fans having dated hardcore basketball fans i'm like this is uncomfortable for me like i feel like i'm living this all over again do they do high stress would they also be people with like gambling uh if you're dating someone with a gambling problem yeah 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 is it hot oh um <laughs> the general like secondhand adrenaline rush i guess yeah yeah are the lows low the lows are low are the high but the highs are high yeah, and it's been like multiple people that I'm like, ah, oh, can I, can I text them today? No, uh, the Raptors lost. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Like it goes that deep into the relationship. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're helping. But it's not like a rule. So like, don't text me if the Raptors lose. It's like, uh, this person's probably not gonna be in a good mood at but all. This is a common thing you date, like gambling. People that are <laughs> so, so you have a type. <laughs> oh, you got yeah. you so, got. So we're not your type. I see your guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, too responsible. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Get your impulse up a little bit. Hot. Get me this hot. You think it's hot? Why? What's hot about? I think it? it's the optimism, it, like the delusion. Like they're the they dreamers. Yeah. That they there's like it's like you know what this guy, he's ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, every girl I've ever dated, I only date like people with jobs, like uh, like jobs. <laughs> and uh, there, there's always someone in love with them that ha- is mo- way more responsible. And I'm always like, you should probably date them. Like I'm a comic, I'm uh, gambling yeah. my life away. Mm-hmm. But they, you know, the the heart wants what the heart wants. Yeah. Wait, so anyway, like, who are the other? Who are your? <laughs> who's your competition? Like what? Are the, what are they doing? And what are these girls doing? The girls are employed. Yeah. And then the other guys, the guys that are like also trying to get with them, like what's their what's their vibe? Their vibe is like, <laughs> I got my MBA. Like that kind oh, of vibe. MBA you know, guy. Like, like, like that kind of. Thing. No, 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 those guys are. The, the, okay, let me tell you. If you're a guy with an MBA, I'm sure you're lovely. You're probably kind of boring though. That's that's probably the thing. Jesus, there goes there goes the brown audience. They all have MBAs. <laughs> the only one without an MBA. Uh, yeah, because you can do so much with an MBA. Hold on, I gotta do a little damage control. I didn't mean that in the way that it came out. <laughs> yeah. um, Great, is, there goes the Columbia no, 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 York University sponsor. <laughs> that's our that's our bread and butter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if if the Brampton didn't exist, this podcast would not exist. Okay, <laughs> this, they're keeping us afloat. Yeah, the yeah. Patel community is very upset with these remarks. They they love their MBAs. <laughs> Listen, yeah. and I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have an MBA, and you also do a lot of crazy, wild stuff on a Tuesday night. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure both. <laughs> yeah. Are, you know, I'm sure you're out there doing karaoke, getting drunk until 3 a.m. like like our friend over here. And you know, that's getting drunk. and that's triggering for me because remember the reason I ended up in the states is because I went to go do my masters. Ah. But did you do an MBA? Not an MBA, but I feel it's like different. mine it's is different. masters in what. H- HR management and development. You know what? Human resources is probably the most important thing that we have in this society. I'd say that right now. <laughs> without <laughs> big money. Without <laughs> yeah. a lot of money in these humans. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what? Let's humans talk, are yeah. Let's talk a little human resources. The the Wetsuin uh, rail protest. We just we just mm-hmm. watched a little bit of stuff like that. There was a protest in Toronto today. We're recording this on Family Day. In Ontario, uh, President's Day in New York State. Yeah. Which one's more important, the president or your family? Tough mm. one. Tough one. Yeah. Are we including presidents of companies too? Yes. And in, in dictatorships, the president is your family when you think about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, think yeah. Think about it like that. So. Huh. President's Day. President's Pro Day? Trump. You're pro Trump. Trump. We got oh, it. Oh, wow. Got I watched into in, that. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, no, but the the, the Wet'suwet'en rail protest—it's been going on all throughout the weekend. 
They shut down the CN rail. They shut down the VIA rail. We do not need more pipelines, they're saying. We do not need to ravage the land. They're going on to unseated land. They're not have, the government does not have consent from these, uh, these groups to build on their land and not necessarily, and maybe profit share, but profit share what if they're giving them any money? I don't know. What are you? Are you guys? Uh, are you? Are we pro industry, pro Canadian government. Are we pro uh, protesters? How do we? F- <laughs> how, do we <laughs> <laughs> how do we feel? How do we feel? You do have to cross uh, the border tomorrow. But how do? How do we? Feel? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll say what I don't like. Mm-hmm. I don't like that the industry side, like the first thing that they do is. Well, you know, the greater good and all the goods and services, people, everyone's going to die because these people are expressing their free little freedoms or whatever. As we come to the table, really acknowledging their what they're taking umbrage with Mm -hmm. and then like attack it that way. But it just seems like it's very propaganda. Even though they do have a point, like goods and services, the flow is being blocked. But but I think it's like they have to make such a large statement that blocks goods and services because of the exactly. impact of it. They're like, listen, this whole thing, the planet is on fire. Australia just burnt to a crisp. Australia's over, right? Just lost <laughs> Australia. It's Australia's done. done. It's done. Wow. It's over. It's over, right? Hurricane season. It's like hurricane season replaced Shark Week. Okay, it's more. <laughs> mm, yeah. It's more popular. Than Earthquakes Shark now, now yeah. too. The earthquakes. The California's on fire. The Amazon's on fire. You know, they were like, listen, cut it out. We got to stop this. Yeah. And then the government's like, oh, you know, we're, we're, we're Canada. We have green initiative, but not really because we got to make all this money. I don't know. I don't like I, I think as Amish said, there's too much money on the table for them to back down. But there needs to be like enough of like a. a and they're protesting the, the plan they is the, the pipeline hasn't already been built. Right? Uh, they're just planning to? I think parts of it have been built, and they're oh. trying to expand it. Yeah. They're trying to expand it into territory now where they're saying you can't come here. Like, does it have to go through that land? Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Because mm. it needs to go through B.C. to get to the Pacific. And they can't do, like, a little... Oh, wait, yeah. Love, they they said they can't do a detour. You're, you're, you're trying to find a... <laughs> a heavy medium, HR, man. You are, well, <laughs> trying oh, to make wow. the company See, and the, the, most support, and the, the people most happy. The most in the country. Even though they just think we're police. Uh, even well, though I'm technically not in HR, HR now, but... No, not I digress. HR, HR. Yeah. But, you know, it's um, Amish was saying something earlier. He's like, we're, co- we're colonized. Like, we're all coming from, it like, is. immigrant backgrounds, not necessarily, like, settler, but we're, we participate in the settler... You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, it's kind of like a parasite vibe. I haven't seen the movie yet, but everyone says parasite vibe. Um, the movie parasite yeah, great, yeah. great. Yeah, it was yeah. it's a great movie. Who's the parasite vibe? Us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we came <laughs> and took it. We came and took it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, that's uh, you, you could say that about colonization. I mean, it, it it I do feel bad. I come here, and I think like it is sad that I'm like we are on the side of the colonizer now. And it's like we have to make a decision on uh, but we don't, do we how have bad to, do we... We don't have to be, right? Do we have to be? Yeah, it doesn't have to be one or the other. I, I see what you're saying. Like, Are mm. we not looking for other ways to... The is there no other way to do this? Is there no other way to do this? Can we not like build other routes for this uh, for these supplies and stuff like that? It's... But I think, the, I think the bigger issue, though, like the reason why you have people protesting across the country isn't just because of the land dispute, right? Like, I think there's a lot of people there who are like, yeah, don't go on unceded land... And like continue the colonization of like Canada that's existed for so long. Or just keep perpetuating it and like try to turn back like some of these things we've been doing for since our the history of our country. But I think it's also like uh, people generally concerned about the global ramifications of climate change. Oh, okay. And of sending oil across to China and keeping the fossil fuel industry moving and keeping ourselves invested heavily in. And all that, and like not trying to actively move to renewables, and still trying to milk out as much money you can from oil and natural gas, and all that. Mm. Well, I climate th- change is a myth. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> goes to goes to America once. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's why that's why the industry side doesn't have to really deal with so much of the argument. Like they this the whole climate change argument is not even being talked about. R- like. It is, but it's such yeah. a side thing. It's really right now they're just talking in terms of legalities and like economy. No one's even yeah. talking about the environmental impact because yeah, no. On the other side, they don't even believe in that. 
They like all oh, the, like that guy Bob Masterson. He the, yeah. the guy the bald guy who's like um, who's on we just on CTV. Bob Masterson. He was okay. So the 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 head of the. It sounded like he was a lobbyist for mm-hmm. like the a chemistry, chemi- chemical, uh, chemi- like a chemistry industry association. Association, yeah. It sounds like he was a lobbyist for that, and he was basically on CTV saying like, "Hey, are we? A, do we have rule of law? Like, just go and shut these uh, these protests down, kind of thing." And yeah, he didn't. I don't think he mentioned the environment. I don't think they believe in that. Even business people, I if, when I talk to them, mm. they're like, "They're like, that's not real climate change. They don't believe in it, so they don't even take that into account as like a thing." Oh. It's strictly just like, okay, you have, like, we need to build this pipeline. Everyone needs it, so just get out of my way. Now, the thing that's really depressing about it is that someone mentioned this too when we were watching the clips. She was saying that they never signed over to be Canada. And they keep bringing up that, that like, hey, we never signed over to be part of your country, so you can't just build your thing. But I guess mm-hmm. the way Canada's seeing that is like, yeah, you never signed up to be part of us, so you're just like international, so we could just do whatever we want. So they're actually occupying some, some land, you could say. It is like a resistance Ooh. movement and an occupation. In uh, in BC, yeah, it's like Holy. fully like imperialistic, colonial. That's crazy. This like happening that's what's in twenty twenty right now. Yeah, as we speak, it's this. Ha- this is happening. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, there was another story. And like the-, the protesters don't really like they're doing it because they feel they need to. Like, you think they want to be out there in the cold on a rail railway? I mean, it does sound fun when you put it that <laughs> way. <but laughs> No, no, 100%. But it's like, uh, we're reading another thing. I think it was, Pem- uh, can you pull it up? It was Pembika, I believe. It was a Canadian oil company that's pretty much been financing a local sheriff's department oh, in yes. Oregon. Because they want to build the pipeline in the States that goes down to the States and then will go out to the Pacific through Oregon as well. Mm-hmm. So they're pretty much funding a publicly, they're giving extra money to the public police p- force of this town in Oregon. And that money's being used to train the police over there how to fight against protesters and do all that stuff. So it's pretty oh. much the co-option of a publicly like funded and like public service, like, which is the police, they're, they're to serve and protect the public, yeah. by a corporation to fight and curb political dissent from the citizens that they're there to protect and serve the benefits of their interests. It's a big old mess. Right? It's so messy. Here, here. Which... Drew looks up the articles. I don't know the mm-hmm. articles. He knows the articles. Yeah. Amish just started reading uh, a couple <laughs> months ago. Just like two wow. months ago, I started reading. Well, he has the subscription, and he reads the articles. It's 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 great. Yeah. I sound like such a hick right now. Why do I sound like that? Um, I'm very <laughs> educated. I'm very educated. But uh, <laughs> this is uh, this was fucked up. Yeah, because uh, basically, like, Canadian police... The way the article worded it was like, uh, the Canadian police have taken over a sheriff's department in the U.S. Not Canadian police. A company... That's based in Canada, an oil and natural gas company based in Canada. Pembina, Pembina pipeline. Uh, they gave twenty six thousand two hundred fifty uh, to police in Jordan Cove for the Jordan Cove project in Coos, Oregon. That's what it is. So Pembina and the sheriff's department are working together. Like spe- okay, here it says. Yet between twenty sixteen and twenty twenty, the department's liquid natural gas division, known as a quote combined services unit, spent at least two million dollars of Pembina's money. The energy company put the funding on hold in April 2019, but left open the possibility that the arrangement could be revised in the future. Pembina and the Sheriff's Department are currently discussing how they may continue to work together, and Coos County Sheriff Craig Zanny said he expects the partnership to be renewed. So it's like the sheriff is working with the oil company to stop protests. So basically they went over there Yikes. and they're making like a little um, like they're making like a little militia training course over there. You think you yeah. think they're making a little militia training course over there? Yeah, it sounds like that. Well, they said they've, they've been getting training from the people who are at Standing Rock. Remember in Standing Rock in North Dakota a couple years ago? They had all the protests for the pipeline. For oh, the yeah, yeah, XL. yeah. Yeah, so it's this Did is they end, who, who ended up uh, I think the oil winning in that? Won. I think the oil company. The oil companies tend to win. But I think this, yeah. th- th- just to tie this in even to like what we're saying about Bernie and all that a little while ago, uh, I think this is the big issue now. Is like We're seeing – this is such a flagrant example of a company – controlling the public sector, con- controlling, like, a public service, which is the police force, right? Yeah. And when you see this stuff come in, into the news about you have the guy doing the spin on it's CTV. A, it's a black and white, yeah. Like, yeah. it's like, the, this is why people say it's the corporate-owned media, you know? And the, and but it's the, strange we, because we as a society, people are becoming more socially conscious. For sure. So I feel like it has to go all the way to the other side. The pendulum has to swing all the way to the other side for the public to be like, whoa, this is wrong. Look, wagging their finger at the companies and the right. companies have to 
But I think it, it would take like for us to be like severely dis like uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people who live like, like fairly not- normal, un un uh, flustered lives. You know what I mean? To like be like, oh wow, my water is completely like undrinkable now and instead of it always being shirked onto like places out of sight out of mind like like native communities in canada yeah where it's like underreported people don't see it but people are living in like horrible conditions and poverty and then you have the government come in and then try to do stuff like they're on the front lines because they're actually feeling it you know yeah right up against themselves and it's not directly affecting us like if today they told us that okay well guess what guys when you go to the grocery store you're not going to be able to get milk bread whatever we would lose our shit and be like what and like why why not they'd be like people are you know blocking the blocking the trains we'd be like well get them the fuck out the way then yeah i mean that's that's the thing it's almost like on some level that bald guy like he speaks for us yeah. Like he like the But we industry, don't want to be that. We don't and we're person. ignorant of it. So basic and and this is the same for like um for even like where we buy our clothes, like when we buy our clothes from or or our cell phones are, are made by you know like shitty conditions, like people working in shitty conditions in in China and stuff like that. It's like how bad like are we willing to pay the extra $2? I think it does come down to us. Like we want to go to Walmart and we want to like get me if you got to enslave a kid, fine, but like I want this t-shirt for 12 versus 15 or whatever. And that's yeah. kind of what the economy is built on. Like they're out there in a way unconsciously representing our interests. We want things cheaper. We want everything we want when we want it. We want to drive whenever we feel like it. Like e- even even when Carter did this, uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, it, he lost his second election. He was the president of the United States. He lost his second election because there were lineups at the gas stations because he couldn't do... I mean, I don't remember exactly the story, but basically Reagan came in and said, okay, we'll just like murder who's ever in our way and take that oil, and Americans can get their oil again. But while Jimmy Carter was there, there were oh, lineups. It was with Iran. And then it was with Iran. Yeah, he knows. Mm. Well, no, no. They just had, they had the, the, the revolution in Iran, and that disrupted the markets at the time. And it was, he was also seen as weak on getting the hostages out of there, the Americans who were there. But that was also everything was set up and put in place because they overthrew Mossadegh in the 50s. He was supposed to be the uh, leader of Iran, reinstated the Shah, and then the, there was like hunger in the streets. People wanted different, so they had the Islamic Revolution, which hasn't necessarily turned out to be s- super great e- either, <laughs> by contrast, but yeah, no. Just the point that I'm making here is that like that's the mm-hmm. last time I, I s- not the last time, but like that is a big moment where the local consumer was affected, and I guess the response was, okay, just go kill whoever you have to kill. You, you know, it's like yeah. we are addicted to our to things e- cheap and easy. Yeah. So until on some level we just accept that, like, okay, if you really want um, a cat, like, okay, forget about the animals, but, like, let's just say with oil, right? It's like mm-hmm. if you really want this without murdering a bunch of people, it's going to cost you, like, like you can't just use your car whenever you want. Yeah. It's going to get that expensive. I think it's the only way, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, and that's hard for us to do as a society because, we, like you said, we do want things cheap and easy. Like, Amazon could be murdering so many people right now and here uh, my dumbass is like, hmm, prime deals. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. This is only six bucks. Let's get it. For sure. For sure. And I, and I think it's like even there's an article back to the country you're living in, the United States. Hmm. Uh, the Atlantic, they had an article uh, a couple days ago. Sorry, there's a... What, was it the cops? Is that an ambulance? There's a police siren in the background. But that's fine. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. That's just, you know, Toronto Knights. What are you going to do? <laughs> uh, no, but there's an Atlantic article kind of making the case for having more states because the way that it's set up right now with the Senate, they're saying the two things that are really unfair are is gerrymandering of different districts to different states. So you know how you can set the lines of a congressional district to like not necessarily represent a group of people in a core area. It can stretch for miles. It would be like really thin and narrow or something like that so that it's going to help Republicans win here or Democrats win there. Stuff like that. Yeah, like gerrymandering. So basically what they do is the gerryma- like the way Republicans do it is they'll take like a densely – uh, a place that's densely Democrats populated do by Democrats do it too, mm. but I feel like Republicans did it first, and the guy who did it might have his name might have been Jerry too or something, or it could have been Democrat. I don't know. Democrats are pretty vicious, but basically, oh, it's named after a guy named Jerry. S- I think so. And gerrymandering is basically like you take like a spot where there's a lot of uh, black people or brown people, whatever, mm-hmm. and you just cut them into different districts. 
So you te- you only let a certain amount of black people with the other white. Like basically, they they know how. to... Uh, not, so and I it's shouldn't not say black gonna... and white. It's it's more like Democratic voters technically, but it ends up being black. Yeah, yeah. Well, for example, like in Austin, Texas, right? Like whoever represent Congress for them. A lot of the people in Austin split their districts with people f- outside of Austin, mm-hmm. so that the person getting voted to Congress has more voters who would be Republican than Democrat. Even though if the congressional district was in Austin in certain places, they would go Democrat, because that's how the city kind of works. So it's a, a way for them to make sure that Republican representatives are going to Congress. And representing Texas over there, even though in certain areas that w- probably wouldn't be the case, they probably wouldn't get the certain amount of votes that they wanted. But another thing they're saying though is saying, let's start splitting up states because the, here's the big thing: the Supreme Court is decided by the president, right, and confirmed by the Senate. So uh, the president wasn't popularly elected this time around. Donald Trump didn't receive more votes than Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton got more popular mm-hmm. votes, but because of the electoral college. Uh, and then the Senate, I, th- I think it was a thing of saying like in the next like couple decades, more and more Americans are going to be living in like only 15 of the states. So each state only has two senators. But that leaves the majority of states each gets their two and then they still have an equal vote for the for the government. Mm. Right. So like California has 40 million people and then Vermont has like 700,000 people. Right, but mm-hmm. they both get two senators representing them in the United States uh, Congress. Yeah. which so, so that doesn't make sense, like logically. Right, like it doesn't like because because there's going to be more votes cast. They're saying there's m- there are more votes. Here's an example. They said there were more votes cast for Donald Trump in Brooklyn than there were in all of Alaska. But all those votes for him in Brooklyn don't matter because they don't actually end up uh, going towards his thing because Hillary Clinton took New York State. Yeah. Right. So they're saying, like, should we add more states? Like, should we t- make Long Island its own state now? Should we make uh, California split in two? You know, should we add, should we give Puerto Rico statehood, which they've been trying to do? Should we give D.C. Yeah. statehood? Yeah. And all that stuff oh to yeah. kind of, like, balance out the power of, uh, I don't know, the popular vote and, like, the democracy and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know. Do, what do you, what, how do you feel? I think that sounds like a good idea. I mean, it could, mm, could go either way, but it does sound more fair. Especially including uh, Puerto Rico, I guess Hawaii would be. Hawaii's a state. Yeah, but um, I'm not sure. Do they have uh, two? They have everything. You know, they have two senators. Yeah. They have uh, congressional representatives. They have, they're have in the Electoral College. No, it's no. Even Canada, Trudeau said he was going to do that with ours. Like Electoral reform is tough because whoever's going to lose on the next round just fights it tooth and nail. Yeah. They're never going to allow – like basically the people who aren't going to win, everyone just tries to win, especially in America. It's a blood sport, They're the politics. Mm-hmm. So it's a tough thing to do. It is it is such a mess, America. I think it's just going to fall now. Yeah. And it does make <laughs> t- the, <laughs> the fall done. of the, the – I think they're done. I the think empire. Yeah. How are they Actually, Colin Quinn's special really. Red State, I love yeah, that Red special. State, Red State, 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 Blue State. That was amazing. Saw so it. I think the he did a live recording. I think I saw the second one, and I almost cried. It was that he's impactful. Great. Oh, I think he's great. Yeah, he's, he's he's so smart. He's like got great insights on all this stuff. Yeah, he's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. No, because he was pretty much saying, I mean. I don't know. I, I, I hesitate. I, you know what? People are always saying now, like, oh, this n- n- another civil war is going to happen in America. Like, the next civil war. I don't think people are motivated enough, though, truly, to have another civil war with one another. I just yeah, don't think, people I don't have think to learn weaponry there. again. I, it's, it's like, even beyond that, it's just like, I, I don't, like, another, like, I don't see it. Well, things have to get a little worse, and then, a, like, a pipeline protest could turn into a, I could see them being one of the players in a in like a multifaceted civil war. It'd probably be a bunch of states, and then there would probably be like some tribes that would get back together and be like, "Let's take back our stuff too." So, I can it's I think it's inevitable. Things just have to get shitty enough. Have hope. Mm-hmm. If things get <laughs> shitty enough, the people will murder each other again. See, I'm not I'm not mm-hmm. looking forward to that. I don't know. You want is that what you're looking forward to? I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah. It just seems like the cycle of history. Like you, you, you get. We were talking to your friend about this before, where it's like you, the, a country, like all of the nice countries today, they were the most vicious before. So oh, we're thinking like like Europe and America, right? Yeah. Like they were the they were so vicious England, that they won. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Amisha's. I think you're more saying like resting on your laurels or whatever as 
as a nation or as a group of people and stuff like that. Like getting getting fat and getting comfortable. You know what I mean? Like you're you're well fed. You don't need to go out there and and hustle for it anymore. However, having said that, like I wouldn't say that our countries are no longer vicious. We're still we're still very vicious. We're just able to like kill someone with a drone strike instead of having to go out mm. there and bayonet them to death. We're with right? stocks. We're still vicious. Yeah, or just economically. Okay. What do you do? What What about when you set them on each other? That's going to be an interesting fight. The internal fight. That's going to be fucked up because yeah. then it's then it's like someone with full rights against someone with full rights. That's going to get scared. That's going to get like pretty nasty pretty quick. And I think it's these resources that set things off like that. So like, let's just say you have. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud on these scenarios. Okay? Yeah. Because yeah. people are already like like they're they're already stashing food. There's like there's like there's like preachers that are selling like just get my mac and cheese. Six months supply, mac and cheese. It's like buckets, and then you open the bucket. Whoa, like, Look at say it. <laughs> it's tasty. When Jesus comes, you're going to have this mac and cheese. It's, <laughs> what the know. hell are you talking about? Where is this? This is a preacher. In, <laughs> like, uh, like doomsday preppers, right? Doomsday preppers, yeah. Yeah, doomsday preppers. They're okay. church-related sometimes. And like, there's these independent militias. It's Honestly, it, throughout history, it's happened so many times. Empires come up, and th- this is how they crumble. Like Inside, they just start fighting over... Re- like A lot of it is like internally, they start fighting over resources. Um, outside, they just start getting yeah. bankrupt because they're in too many places. So I can see it happening, and maybe in our in the kids, the, the next generation's lifetime. I see it. You you mean like uh, Gen Z or after Gen Z? Because Z, I mean Z is Z. Sorry, we're in Canada. Z <laughs> is the I last uh, letter in the alphabet. Oh, uh, are we doing numbers? Are we going to numbers? N- maybe back to names. Alpha. Oh, so uh, Generation Alpha? Damn, they'd be so lucky to get that. I know. Yeah. yeah. It does seem like we're at the end of the road. I think Gen X was a little bit of like, because uh, that, that was a Douglas Copeland came up with that, the yeah. book and stuff like that. Was maybe yeah, because it hasn't always been letters. Couldn't have been Gen T? But I guess it's within the Gen modern T. era or the postmodern era. I feel like it's a sub you know? category. Because we, we have the, the whole millennials era? and then the XY falls within yeah. millennials, right? I, it, they don't. They're not that different, actually. Like it's just a marketing term that people make up every generation. Like every generation, old people want to sell stuff to young people. So someone just makes up like, oh, they're call. I call them millennials, and the way to get them is you do whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean, like they don't want to get a job yet. They want to do. It's like they're twenty. Yeah. So of course that you could say that about them. But I think everyone's been. We've all been. We're all boomers. I think, like non-Vietnam War fighting boomers. Like I think everyone after the boomers. It's the Why? same thing. I don't see mm-hmm. this difference because everything that boomers complain about about millennials, that y- they invented that. Like they invented <laughs> not being religious, not yeah. having kids, not you know what I mean, like yeah. breaking up the marriage or whatever. You know what I mean? Like they're not. They didn't do anything. I mean, unless they went to Vietnam, but it, but most yeah. I think most of them didn't. So it's like they're just they're just old millennials. I think. But don't, you don't think that millennials have like somewhat different uh, politics and outlooks <laughs> on things than boomers? I mean. We're not we're not a hundred percent. I mean, I do think we have a lot of the same kind of like bad habits as the boomers do, but we also have a lot of like uh, well, just in terms of like apathy. Yeah, and, like, but it all comes from what's happening I- in society at the time. So mm-hmm. boomers, they were you know they had to work really really hard. They had to walk all the way from home up a hill to get to school and that sure. Was that was the greatest generation. That's before them. They didn't even, the boomers didn't mm. even have to do that. They're the first lazy ones. Do you think they were lazy though? No, yeah. they were working hard. They're, they're, they're lying to you. They're, 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 <laughs> they're full of shit. They were, they were the first ones that got to chill out yeah. and do nothing. Unless they went to Vietnam. Uh, well, yeah, Vietnam, yeah, definitely. And uh, other than that, like other than that, but, yeah. but they're. Well, I guess I'm talking. I'm thinking of immigrants because it kind of skews it, right. depending on where you're living, in terms of quality of life. For sure, for sure. Immigrants, I find like Asian immigrants seem like they almost feel like the boomers' parents. Like, that's their mm. level of conservatism and, like, conscientiousness and, like, work ethic, I guess. Not to call it work ethic, but boomers are, like, liberal pretty much. But, like you were saying, no the way. economic circumstances have changed. So, boomers are just millennials in a booming economy. Like, the houses were cost nothing. Yeah. It was easy to get a job. And then millennials are boomers, but in, like, a shitty yeah, economy. Yeah, they set it up so we could spike it. But I think that might be a, the name of this episode, Boomers in a Shitty Economy. Millennials in a Shitty <laughs> Economy. <laughs> that sounds economy. like a song. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's something, I don't want to say most boomers are liberal, though. I think most, a lot of them are, what do you mean? But a lot of older people tend to skew more conservative as well, like. I think that's your parents. What do you mean? 
I think the boomers are the ge- are the first generation to be the liberals. I'm t- like I think that was their parents that were the that were the conservatives. Oh yeah, well they were, well they were like part of the '60s and like the hippie movement. But now a lot mm. of those people are like. Republicans, you know? I'm sure there are people who are protesting stuff in the 60s. Depending on how many drugs they did, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Open up their mind, man. That that might be it. But no, I I think there's a lot who didn't go that way. Um, I think they're I think they're liberal and then they got old and got like a house that they they have a house. They want to protect it. So now they're conservative. But they're really Mm, liberal. Yeah. Like they're really they were the they were the ones that brought it in and I think taught the next generation to be like that. But now they're old and they have the house and they're like, okay, I don't want my property value to go down. So exactly. I'll just be a conservative. But it'll be like like Roger Stone, <laughs> like loving like rock and roll and like going to swingers clubs with his wife and stuff like that. Th- those are some liberal attitudes, you could say. But then mm-hmm. he's also an arch conservative. I mean, it's like, what it, what is the Republican now, like conservative party? It's To me, it's like obsession with money at any cost, regardless of what, maintaining a status quo at any cost. That's it. But the status quo that they have is still somewhat different than like what people going into the Second World War had or whatever like that. Cuz it's not mm-hmm. there's a lot less it's such a, it's so excessive now, right? Cuz like you we're coming out of the Great Depression where people were like in bread lines and stuff like that. And not to say that people aren't struggling now to eat and that's there's not food insecurity today, but like back then it was it seemingly I wasn't there, but seemingly it was like such a cultural thing of like mm-hmm. everyone's day to day struggle was so brutal and so intense. Whereas now it's like there's a lot of like CNN and air conditioning. And yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, Rush Limbaugh and like all you can but even Golden Corral. Buffets. 2000 <laughs> Golden Corral. You, you know what I mean? No, like uh. it's like it's 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 it's. You you your your basic needs are pretty much met for most people now. So then. It's just, but it's like it's never enough. Like there's, I think there's mm-hmm. a there's an issue with like satisfaction or whatever like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a perpetual growth. We need more growth, more growth, grow, 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 grow. But, but Janelle, I think uh, he cut you off there. Oh, I forgot my point. Um, but I think it was something with I guess to piggyback off you talking about the needs and Maslow's hierarchy or whatever. Yeah, I think it our our actions and our values will reflect where we are there so you know if food shelter we have all that on lock then we're going to be we're going to seek self-actualization and you know people that's why all these startups people are working for startups and they'll you know take a pay cut yeah and not like not make any money but they're like oh we're creating something we're building we're changing the world right but not even like the startups are now seen as like a cash grab like if you have a startup (laughs) it's like i'm securing the bag the best way i know how and that's by you know, selling you Tide Pods on the black market now. With this mm, app. That's a good idea. <laughs> Actually, that is a good idea. Yeah. Well, it's like when they talk to the owner of Pornhub and like someone's <laughs> trying to tell him like, I think you might like the whole thing might be exploiting people, and he's like, No, 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 I'm I'm a I'm a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, no, that's impossible. I I, I built my business on uh, startup values, like Silicon Valley values built of sil- Pornhub. Like he kind of has that attitude. There is like mm-hmm. an altruism there. They've told themselves that they're perfect. I think the other guy, the guy who made PayPal, has that too. But then, what do you guys think of Bill Gates? And um, <clears throat> I mean, Bill Gates is the one because I just I know he has a documentary about like I'm trying to fix the world. I'm just gonna yeah. use my brain <laughs> to fix it all. I'm gonna fix yeah, all the yeah. stuff now. Yeah. But then Hasan Minaj has j- I I didn't watch the video because they're always like half an hour. But it says like why Bill Gates will not fix the world. Like he just has the comeback on it already. Yeah. And I'm like what did he did he is he a sociopath? What do you guys think? Is Bill Gates a sociopath? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to believe it, cause I'm even, th- and this is probably anyone with that much money though. It's like, what are you doing? Like, Bloom, like here's the thing, uh, Mehdi Hassan from the Intercept. He has a podcast. Mm-hmm. Sorry to cut you off. But no, just, no, that's just it. one thing. Uh, and he was saying, he was interviewing Tom Steyer, and he's like, Tom, you're running for president. You're not gonna win. He's like, there's no way you're winning. <laughs> like, it's just, it's not happening. I'm sorry. So he pulled a Bernie. He's like, I know this and you know this. It's not happening. <laughs> he's like, and you've already spent like over a hundred million dollars. He's like, if I had a hundred million dollars, do you know how much good I would be doing? Yeah. <laughs> Instead of this like crazy, but like back a candidate who actually has a chance, back Bernie or something like. Like, mm-hmm. what are you doing, running for president? You have no shot. And I think that's. He was like, I think I can win. I think the numbers in South Carolina look good. Like, it's no. It's not going to happen for you. But it's like when Bill Gates has tens and tens of billions of dollars, when Bezos has tens and tens of billions of dollars, like, 
d- do do more. What do you like? Why do you need it? What? what why? Yeah. Why? That's why it's crazy. E- yeah, that's why even this is why I kind of. Uh, I want to believe Bill Gates is more leaning more on the altruistic side because with, you know, the whole Jeff Bezos and his divorce and Mackenzie Bezos became the was the richest woman yeah, yeah. in the world. Got the f- And she recently sold, was it 400 million of, or she sold her stocks in Amazon. And Great. she... Yeah, and she cash out. Yeah, ca- break cash up out. Mon- break up that monopoly, though. She's yeah. supposed to sell it privately to someone else, maybe. And then she donated it to, um, or no, because she signed the Bill and Melinda Gates, the giving pledge. The giving pledge. Yeah, with Warren Buffett and everybody. Yeah, I have faith but that Jeff people, Bezos hasn't done that. Um, I think Bezos is not. He's still like, I want to conquer the world level. Whereas Bill Gates conquered the world, retired out of the game, and said, <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'm gonna now I'm gonna conquer your minds, and I want to be the spiritual leader of the of a generation. And uh. he's gonna genuinely do. But it then, how does, does that make him a sociopath? Who Bill Gates? Yeah. No, I'm saying he. I think I think all these guys like they go like I think there's chance for people to change. Like I think um, he was, and he built his company, cutthroat, vicious, whatever. He and he's like, oh damn, <laughs> I went too went too hard a little bit there. So yeah. let's. So Clean it up that. a bit. Okay. I think that's fine. I think, and, and we were talking about this before, like, the, because because a lot of times, you know, with the pipelines, with, like, animal cruelty, we, we participate in the system, but we don't even know it's happening because even that corporation will hide that footage from us. Like, let's just say yeah. in Ontario, if you go and do some protest footage, like, that, uh, Doug Ford is trying to make that illegal and, like, be able to put you in jail for shit like that. You know what I mean? So it's Whoa. like, it's with like the animal, with, with animal rights in particular, they're saying if you like get a job at a slaughterhouse under false pretenses and you like are actually associated with some animal rights thing and you film it, that you can be charged for like for mis- misclassifying yourself, misidentifying yourself. But you need mm. whistleblowers at the same time to s- tell the public when things are happening in corporations and in government and things like yeah. that. So you need it. It's, it's but that also signals a huge problem because if people have to like dress up in a trench two kids in a trench coat and go in there and be like let's see like let's bring them down there should be consultants going in there and doing their checks and seeing that right but i think that things are people aren't trusting properly. the consultants though right there's mm-hmm. there's been a breakdown of trust and then there's there's certain things that the government like even when the guy says the canada has laws like when we're talking about about the the Master. rail blockades and stuff like mm-hmm. that right yeah it's bob masterson bob masterson <laughs> Uh, you know, even when You're even Bob when he's bro. saying that, uh, it's kind of like okay, but who wrote these laws? You know what I mean? Yeah. If we put up safety guidelines, who says what is safe and what isn't safe? Yeah, I mean, he's only giving you two options, and that's what corporations always do. They only, they only give you two options. They hide a bunch of information, like like a lot of that stuff, and that's why we were saying even with that meat thing, where it's like R- Doug Ford is getting paid off by some guy to make it illegal to go make a video. But in Silicon Valley, someone's coming out with some hot, hot vegan products. It takes one sociopath to destroy another. And that's the hope, really. That's the hope, is that we need people like Bill Gates to turn and to get that softness of heart to be like, you know what? Uh, Fuck capitalism. I'm going to fuck with this a little bit and change it even if I don't, even if it's not a billion dollars in my pocket tomorrow. Because we need, like, it's, I don't know, like, the grassroots movements have to be there, but we need, let's get as many of those sociopaths too, you know? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. Yeah, cuz you know, regardless of your views on capitalism, like money makes problems go away. Not all of them, but a lot yeah, of them. A lot of them. <laughs> a lot of them, yeah. A lot. Of them. Damn, that was a good episode. D- you you're like, you're our first official guest. We're about 18 episodes in. It's usually just Whoa. me and me rambling. Yeah. Like crazy to each other, but this is a this is a nice this is a nice counterbalance. Yeah, I hope yeah. we didn't cut you off too much. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry if I was uh, a. <laughs> <if I stopped. laughs> there's guilt in your eyes. I, I know, right? But uh, do you, do you <laughs> feel like do you feel like uh, there's something else you want to say though? Uh, like about what? Sorry, not to cut you off. Were you saying that because like I wasn't letting her say enough? Are you trying to undermine me right now? <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a little maneuver. No, 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 no. You this isn't an attack. This is not <laughs> an internal attack. This is not internal attack. Oh, because I had that point earlier that I forgot. Yeah. Now, I th- once I forget something, it's gone. I'm gonna wake up in the middle of the night and okay, and let us know. Okay, <laughs> recording to well, my voice memos. You can, memos you can send us a message or DM, and we'll we'll bring it up next week. Yeah, there's another Jamaican saying. Actually, no, it's not a Jamaican saying. It's just my mom. If it, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, that is a Jamaican saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah That's a Jamaican saying. Something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, if when I say when I call her, I'm like, oh, I needed, to, I called you to tell you something. Ah, oh, I forgot. She's like, well, it means it wasn't important. I'm like, yeah, damn it. So well, I'm sure it wasn't important. important, but let us know. Let us know when you know. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to plug? Anything you want to shout out? 
Ooh, okay. Uh, I'll plug. So, have you been? No, you haven't been on it yet, and you haven't been on it yet. I have a podcast uh, with my co-host out in Brooklyn. It's called "I'm Trying." It's about failure okay. and desperation, and every. Well, now we took a couple months break. Now we're back. And around weekly or so, we okay. interview people about their failure moments, de- moments of desperation, just to normalize failure. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think we're trying to do that, too, without even trying to do <laughs> that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, mm-hmm. It's great. It's a real inspiration to the community. <laughs> to know that you know, that sounded so sarcastic. <laughs> no, 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 I think it's great. I think that's great. I <laughs> Your podcast is changing the world. <laughs> are you are you gonna plug anything, Amish? Anything you want to shout out? Just follow my Instagram at Fade to Brown. Follow my stories. I do shows all around Toronto. I yeah. can't travel too much because I'm writing a TV show right now. No big deal. Um, but uh, yeah, just follow my Instagram at Fade to Brown. Um, and I'm always doing shows uh, around the city. I do. We do go. Outside. I do go outside. I uh, was in Orangeville recently, like just going out, but. I'm keeping it local because mm-hmm. I'm writing a show. So just go do, do the Instagram. Check out the stories. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Thank, thank you. You're really clarifying why you're not uh, as ambitious as, <laughs> <laughs> as, as this audience as this audience <laughs> thinks you should be. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just like a lot of my plate. Uh, yeah. Drew goes to New York a lot, but that doesn't mean that I. <laughs> uh, well, you don't have an MBA. He doesn't have an MBA. That's true. Yep. But I have a Writer's Guild card of Canada. Associated with American and Britain. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have my weekly show at Lalo Brewery. That's every Sunday night at eight o'clock. College in Dufferin here in Toronto, eleven four four College Street. Great craft brewery, brews, brewed in house. Yeah, they have Trinidadian and beers food. there too, right? And, and food. The t- food is Trinidadian. Chef in the kitchen, Trinidadian. Uh, yeah. So it's it's good show, good food, great times. So come out to that if you can. Uh, this has been Let's Come to an Understanding. Uh, we stand with the wet swim protesters. Uh, and thank you for listening. Let's come to an understanding. 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 Let's come to an understanding.